Hi, I'm Jim Meyer. I'm a retired pastor in the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. In my collection in times long ago, I'd like to share a story with you. It's entitled Light Tap by James P. Meyer. And this is Orpha's story. It was during the middle of February and there was a heavy coat of snow on the ground. My husband and I were driving on an emergency trip to our daughter's home. The road was unfamiliar to us since my daughter had just moved to the state of Nebraska. It was snowing and we mistakenly took a wrong turn and found ourselves on an isolated road. Our car got hopelessly stuck in the snow. We dared not think of what could happen and suddenly I felt very alone. There was no habitation anywhere that we could see. Even though we were getting cold, we knew if we kept the motor running, we would soon run out of gas. After ruling out everything we could do to get help, we prayed. Then my husband said, our lights are still working. So he tapped out the SOS Morse code on them. We feel that the Lord was watching over us. It so happened the plane was flying overhead. One of the passengers said to the pilot, there's a car below sending an SOS message for help. In less than an hour, a snow plow and tow truck came and found us to get us out of our predicament. They told us the story of a plane seeing our SOS. It takes a lot of faith and prayer and muscle, but miracles still happen. The end. I wonder if you've ever driven on an isolated road during a snowstorm. I wonder if Orpha and Ted left home with forebodings about the emergency at daughter's house. I wonder if it's true that Nebraska is not a place to drive when it is snowing. I wonder if Orpha did think what could happen there being stranded in the cold and snow. I wonder how much gas they had left in the car. I wonder if praying is the last resort. I wonder what got into Ted's mind that he suddenly remembered about SOS and the car lights. I wonder if he really felt he was doing something or just flashing lights on a whim. I wonder if the plane passenger could believe his eyes when he saw the flashes. I wonder what the airline passenger's first inclination was when he saw the flashes. Did he understand right off what was happening or did the repetitive flashing continue his focus? I wonder how Orpha and Ted felt when they saw the snow truck and, and the snow plow. I wonder if you've ever experienced a miracle. And now our family room reflections. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak. 
And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. This is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 to 29. And now our recollections. Philip got the message from the Holy Spirit to go and help the man on the wilderness road, perhaps similar to the airline passenger who received the message to send help to the middle of a no, nowhere in a snowy time. Philip found the Ethiopian official trying to make sense of scripture. He seemed to be in a quandary in the working out of his salvation. Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? To which the official responded, how can I, unless someone guides me? Orpha and Ted were hopelessly stuck in the snow in their car and getting colder by the minute. They realized they needed help to guide them out of their predicament. When asked, who the lamb was that was led to slaughter. Philip opened up the scriptures to the official and told him the good news about Jesus. Convinced and delightfully excited for the truth, the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop and both them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Orpha and Ted were already baptized and had employed the love of Jesus in their hearts already. In their time of trouble, they spoke to God for his help in prayer, since they were both hopelessly stuck. You can imagine them both excitingly declaring, Look, there's the snowplow coming to save us. What joy, what excitement they must have had. Both stories end with rejoicing and thanksgiving to God. Where are you in these stories? The miracles of salvation mentally, spiritually, and physically actively show God's love. Have you recognized the miracles in your life? Or like the eunuch have gotten hung up on the words? How does your story enter in God's overall story? Share your story.